Hey, what is up guys? This is Nishi from MST.TV here back with another Market Watch episode. So we finally have that ban list dropping and there were definitely some really cool changes. I for one am really excited to see how different the game will be, especially with all of the new stuff that we are getting in Legacy of Destruction. So we are going to go over a ton of the different changes that we've seen happening over the market over the last couple of days. I believe we actually have a ton of things to go over. So we're going to be doing two different episodes today and tomorrow as well. Be sure to stay tuned for that. One other thing though guys is that I am going to be gone for a couple of weeks. I'm going to be going on vacation in Amsterdam, Paris and London. So I'll be gone from April 20th to May 4th. But if you guys know of any cool game stores in those cities, I'd love to see if I can drop by and check them out. So let me know down in the comments. Anyways guys, let's get started. Alright, so the first card we definitely have to talk about is Thunder Dragon Colossus. I think this is the card that was unbanned that the most people are excited about. I think people have been wanting this unbanned for years. I think even like right after it was banned. Now this is admittedly one of the most powerful boss monsters in the game, preventing both players from searching but also having built in protection if you have thunder monsters in your graveyard. The crazier thing though is the ease with which this card can be summoned since you can just convert any thunder monster on the field into this card if you activated a thunder monster's effect in hand. Now of course this is meant to be used by cards from the thunder dragon archetype but there is also nemesis corridor as well which we'll talk about after. There's definitely people cooking with this card right now so we'll have to wait and see what people come up with. Of course being one of the most hyped cards here we did see some really significant price spikes though they have cooled back down pretty significantly to some more reasonable levels within the last day or so. The ultimate rares have been expensive for a while, they did shoot up to over $100 each, but they're now back down to between $75 and $80. The original secret rares from Soul Fusion were at around 10 to 12 they were 50 for a second, but now they're at a more reasonable 16 to 18 and then fortunately, this card did get a pretty accessible ultra printing in the tins. Those hit a peak of 12 to $15, but they've already cooled back down to the $6 mark. So yeah, thankfully, this card is actually pretty affordable all things considered, as long as you're okay with playing a relatively low rarity. I don't know why I feel like there's a strong chance that this card will be reprinted in Rarity Collection 2. If you like your high rarity Thunder Dragon stuff, then you've probably had the ultis for a while. If not, and you're okay with playing with the budget ultras for now, definitely consider offloading those higher rarity printings while players are still buying into the hype. Another card that's related to the Colossus unbanning here, it's Nemesis Corridor. So this card is actually from the Nemesis archetype, which I don't think many people will remember, but it's technically the same archetype that Protoss and Eskados are from. Anyways, the big thing with Corridor is that it is a Thunder Monster, which means that it can be converted into Colossus, but on top of that, it has an effect that activates in hand, where you can special summon it by shuffling a banished monster back into the deck or extra deck. So effectively, as long as you have a monster banished, Corridor converts into a one card Colossus for free. Because of that, it's the thing that most people are looking at potentially splashing into other strategies to grant them access to Colossus. The cool thing is that you can put back monsters that were banished face down, so even a Prosperity or Extravagance will technically turn this card on. And I believe that this card can be searched with either Nemesis Flag or Cupid Pitch. So yeah, we'll have to see exactly how it is that the card will be used. But because of how it could be good theoretically, Nemesis Corridor has seen a lot of demand over the last few days. This is literally a card that was almost a bulk super rare. People have talked about how good it would be if Colossus were ever unbanned, but no one actually knew that it was going to happen. So for the longest time, Corridor was only a dollar to two dollars. Right when Colossus was unbanned though, a ton of people turned their attention to Corridor automatically, and it shot up to $20, but it seems to have now settled at around $12 each. Of course, this card only has the one super rare printing from back in Eternity Code, a set that was opened pretty heavily at the time because players needed access to Access Code Togger. I'm fairly sure that this card will be relevant in something, it's gonna see some sort of usage, I'm just not sure of where. I'm also not sure of if Corridor will be used at 1 or 3 because that's going to be another thing that affects how high this card will eventually get before it gets reprinted. If you haven't already, definitely take the chance to dig through your bulk for this card and offload any extras you have, just in case it does get reprinted. Alright, so there is one other Thunder Dragon related card here, and it's actually from the archetype itself, it's Thunder Dragon Dark. So back in Soul Fusion, we had a few new Thunder Dragon main deck monsters that expanded the archetype. Back then, Thunder Dragons were a really strong pure deck. You could play them with Crusadia or Danger or other things, but they were really strong on their own as well. 
the deck fell off completely when Colossus was banned. People did try it out again last year or so when they were playing Chaos Space and the Bestial Monsters to proc Thunder Dragon effects, but I think they did well at one or two events but then didn't see any more play after that. Now however, with Colossus back, I think some people want the other Thunder Dragon cards to see play alongside something like Battery Man Solar. I don't know if it would be completely pure or as just an engine of maybe like 7 or 8 cards and then combined into something else. However, it does seem that Dragon Dark is the one of the Thunder Dragon monsters that you'd be running more copies of than the others, so 2-3 to three copies while well, with Roar and Hawk you'd maybe play 1 or 2. Dragon Dark has a quick effect where you can discard it to search for another copy of itself, or if it's banished or sent from the field to the graveyard, you search for any Thunder Dragon card. So it's cool because its in-hand effect can proc the effect of Titan, but if you also banish this card with something like Allure of Darkness, you can search for Hawk, use Hawk to revive Dark, and then convert that into a Colossus. So for these Thunder Dragon monsters, they each have two different printings as Ultras in Soul Fusion and then Secret reprints in the tins. However, it's just Dragon Dark that has really shot up in price by a lot. These were around $5 or so, but either version is literally going to cost you $20 per copy now. Roar and Hawk have seen small bumps up as well, but they're each under the $10 mark right now, so Dark really is that expensive piece that you're going to need to pick up if you're interested in playing any sort of Thunder Dragon variant. Moving on to something else that was unbanned, we next have Arch Nemesis Protoss. This card is a pretty crazy one that was banned not too long ago, relatively speaking. Protoss is a worm that you can special summon by banishing three monsters with different attributes from your graveyard. You then get to declare one attribute, destroy all monsters on the field with that attribute, and then until the end of the next turn, neither player can special summon monsters of that declared attribute. Now the cool thing about this thing is that it can't be destroyed by card effects and it itself is a dark monster so at the very least this card can declare darks, destroy any other darks that might be there and then you can lock both players out of dark monsters. So for a while this card was problematic in Sword Soul, it was searchable with emergence and you could call different attributes to essentially lock your opponent out of summoning anything at all especially if they were playing a really dedicated attribute strategy. It seems kind of weird that they would unban a Floodgate monster, especially after hitting additional Floodgates in Summon Limit and Anti-Spell Fragrance, but I guess the difficult part would be finding something that can really abuse this. I do think Sword Soul could do it, obviously, but they lost Baron to Fleur, so they're much more vulnerable to Nibiru now, and the deck probably isn't going to be all that great or consistent. And then outside of that, it's harder to actually access Protoss consistently, so I don't think it's going to be problematic in any other strategies. However, players seem to be really shocked that the card is back, and to be fair, Sword Soul is a popular strategy with a lot of players, so there's a decent amount of hype for Protoss coming back. On top of that, it only ever got one printing in Eternity Code. The card was sitting at $5 basically ever since it was banned, but it shot up right away, and now the cheapest ones that you can get on TCG Player are $45 to $50 each. Honestly, I'm still not sold on this one. I don't think it's going to do too much, and I don't think Sword Soul is going to be meta relevant at all in 2024. I'm actually surprised that this card has maintained as high of a price point as it has, even a couple of days after the list, it's definitely something that I'd be looking to offload as soon as possible. Okay, so this is an interesting one to look at, it's Magispector Orthrus New. So Kirin was finally unbanned, but we didn't see too much movement with that card's price. I think we all expected it to happen, so that was already factored into the card's price over the last several weeks leading up to the list. However, now that it's actually happened, we saw a couple of jumps in the prices of Magispector cards, and one of the more notable jumps was with New. This card is a new Link 2 from Phantom Nightmare that requires two pendulums to make, where at least one of them is a Magispector monster. However, this card is actually really good. It lets you add two Magispector pendulums from your extra deck back to your hand, and then add two Magispector pendulums with different names face up to your extra deck from your deck, but then you're locked into Magispector and Draco Slayer monsters for the rest of the turn. Now, the idea here is that you're just loading up your extra deck with more bodies to summon, and this is really good for Magispectors since they all have effects to search for interactions that happen when they're summoned. So, in a way, by extension, this card is almost like a plus four if you get to resolve it. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't have the same protections as the main deck pendulums from targeting and destruction, so this card is very vulnerable to something like Valor or Impermanence, but it's still a cool card nonetheless. I feel like this is a card that people have had their eyes on before because it was just so cheap and it was probably given a little bit less attention because Kirin wasn't unbanned over in the OCG. 
The secrets were literally down at like $2 each. They're now up at around $5 to $6. And then with the quarter century version, they were around the $30 mark. They're now way up at $65 to $70 per copy. Obviously, the card is inflated, but with the quarter century, it's going to take a lot more time for the price to cool back down. And then with the secrets, they were so cheap before, and they're honestly still relatively cheap. They'll probably stay around this price for the next little while. We'll have to wait until we see the next couple weekends of events where we actually get to see Magispectors in action before we'll be able to determine whether or not the hype for this card is actually justified. Moving on to another card that was moved off of the list, we have Chicken Game, which went from being banned to now limited. This card is a really simple field spell, it does do a number of different things. The main part of the effect that's actually used is that the turn player can pay a thousand life points in order to draw a card. So essentially this card was used in those life equalizer, blasting the ruins sort of decks. Chicken Game is also just a soft once per turn, so you could activate multiples, draw just like Upstart Goblin, and then create really big life point differentials. Now even though neither player can respond to this card's effects, this card still can leave you susceptible to Droll and Lockbird, which is definitely a detriment and I think it's a big part of why the card won't see too much play, sort of like how no one's really playing Upstart Goblin now either. There are some cool things you can do with this card though, I could see it being used alongside Ancient Fairy Dragon which is now unbanned, and there's also a card coming in Legacy of Destruction that can potentially make use of this card as well, and there is also the fact that Set Rotation is still in the game though it is limited to 1. Ultimately though, I don't think that Chicken Game is going to do anything crazy or game breaking. It's cool as like this alternative terraforming target and I guess if you play something really dedicated, but I just don't think it's anything that insane. However, Chicken Game is funny because it only has the one printing and that came out back in Clash of Rebellion, which is from 2015. This card is almost a decade old. I think that like Protoss, no one was really expecting this card to be unbanned out of nowhere. This card was literally a dollar for the last few years, but it's now a solid four to five dollars each. This card has been banned since April of 2016, so a lot of you newer players probably haven't even seen the card, but it's another good one to look for if you're ever sifting through bulk. Set it aside since it is worth a few dollars now. And finally, one last card I want to mention here is Dimensional Barrier. So this card I feel like is one of the more hated cards that's still in the game. It shuts off one aspect of summoning, so either Ritual, Fusion, Synchro, Xyz, or Pendulums. It's basically a turn skip if you're playing against certain sorts of really dedicated strategies. Now in the aftermath of the ban list, Dimensional Barrier is a card that I think a lot of players are looking at adding to their sideboards. This card is almost a complete blowout against Voiceless Voice, since you can stop them from getting any ritual monsters onto the board. And then of course against Branded, they can't do anything if they can't fusion summon. It isn't really that great against Snake Eye Fire King since you can't call Lynx, but I think against most other decks you can find something to call where the card is at least decent, and it does shut down a lot of those rogue matchups as well. With Anti-Spell Fragrance and Summon Limit now hit, and then Rivalry goes in and there can be only one hit before, a lot of the common floodgates that players were citing in going first are now hit, so we could be moving into a game where we're seeing more cards with effects that'll apply for just the one turn or they'll stop a single interaction, and D-Barrier is among the strongest of those cards in the game right now. With D-Barrier being reprinted in Rarity Collection 1, accessibility isn't an issue at all, it's available in almost every single rarity, even common, I think it came in one of the structure decks, so even budget players will have access to it. The one printing that is more expensive now is the QCR printing, which was around $15 to $20 before, since the card wasn't seeing that much play, but after the ban list has now jumped up to $40 each. It is a bit more of a random one, but definitely worth noting if you're holding on to any. I still personally like the collector's rares, since they're a nice budget alternative compared to a lot of the QCRs in the set. But with all of the different versions available, pick whichever one works for you and which one you think will look best in your own deck. Alright guys, that is it for today's episode. I know there's a ton of stuff that I still haven't gotten to. We are going to post another Market Watch episode tomorrow to make sure that we cover all of those things and make sure that you guys are up to date with all of the ban list aftermath and how it has affected the market. Anyways guys, if you did enjoy today's Market Watch, please make sure you let me know by hitting that thumbs up button. Make sure you leave a comment in the comment section down below. Hit subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time guys, don't forget to hold on to your MST.TV.